If you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to turn with me to the Old Testament book of Joshua. There has been a theme throughout these morning services, beginning with Brother Lauren Larson, where he, has, he was ministering on the subject, if you get it half right, you get it all wrong, talking about, of course, our faith and our walk. Dad ministered yesterday on the subject of freedom. And of course, I want everybody to know this, that we don't plan, like we don't talk to each other. We don't get around in a huddle and say, Lord, I think you need to do this. Dad, I think you need to do this, and I think I'm going to do this. It doesn't work that way. But I believe that the Lord is trying to tell us something. And I believe like we're going to carry on with that theme of victory within the heart and life of the believer. And we're going to be looking in Joshua chapter 6, a very familiar story. Joshua chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into your hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And you shall compass the city, all you men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shall you do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And on the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times. Notice that repetitious number of seven. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horns, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Now go to verse 20. Verse 20. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. So the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And I want to use for a subject, ministering a few moments today, and I promise I will not hold you long, just until I let you out. It's shouting time again. Your walls are coming down. Come on, church. I said it's shouting time again. Your walls are coming down. Your walls are coming down. It's time for you to get your shout on in this place this morning. It's shouting time again. Your walls are coming down. Praise God. Praise God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for all that you've done for us during this week. We ask that you would continue to bless your people, continue to pour out your blessings, and we ask once again that you would anoint us one more time today to minister your word and anoint our ears to hear what you would have us to say. And we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus, amen, amen. and amen. Y'all seem like you're just such an easy crowd to preach to. I think somebody can sneeze and you might start running. I want to share with you a personal story. Some of you, many of you have heard this. Some of you have not. For those of you that have, just bear with me for a moment, for those that haven't. 
My grandfather began to teach this message when I was about 17 years of age. I'll be 45 this year. So that was a few days ago. It was around 1997. I was a senior in high school. And most 17-year-old kids, I can probably assure you that the message of the cross was not high on their minds, just like it wasn't on mine. I was, a, I was trying to figure out what to do with the rest of my life, where to go to college, what, I was, what was I going to study, and the thought of that alone was just enough to say, uh, I really don't want to do that. But the message of the cross really wasn't high on my list of things to know. But as I began to go off and drift off into college, I was away from home, living in the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma, going to college. And those two and a half years was a very trying time for me. 19, 20, 18, 19, 20 years of age, 21 years of age, something like that. It just seemed like no matter what I tried to do regarding living for God, there was no victory. All there was was frustration, anger, confusion. And I can take you back to some of those spots on the grounds of ORU where I would be walking by myself and nearly on the verge of tears as I was complaining or really asking, Lord, I don't understand this. I'm doing everything that I know to do. I'm trying the very best that I can, but these struggles that I have in my life, I can't seem to get a handle on them. And there were so many times during that span of two and a half years where I would just try to tell myself, I can't do this, I'm done. I don't understand it. I'm doing everything that I know to do. I'm praying, I'm reading, I'm doing this, and I'm doing this, and yet there is nothing. There would be times at night, and I kid you not, as my roommate would be asleep that I would bury my head in my pillow And those hot tears would fill that pillow and I'd begin to pray, God, you've got to help me. I don't know what to do. How many of you have been there? I don't know what to do. And I'll never forget, I would turn on the internet because the radio station here, WJFM 88.5, we were on internet at that time as well, and I could pick it up in my dorm room. And I would hear my grandfather, my dad, and Lauren and others talk about Romans chapter 6. And as they would begin to teach on Romans 6, my grandfather just finished his commentary. He mentioned it last night around 1998, I believe. And I asked my mom to send me a copy, and she did. She sent it in the mail, and I'll, I'll never forget the day when I went to my P.O. box on campus and I pulled out that slip that said, you've got a box or you've got a package, and I opened it up, and it was that commentary, and I remember I immediately just flipped it open to Romans chapter 6, and as I began to read those words, and, and I began to look at what my grandfather was writing and what he was trying to explain regarding the sin nature. It didn't connect. I, I knew what he was saying was right, and yet it, it just wasn't connecting in my spirit. 
There was just a disconnect there. I, I didn't quite understand what he was saying. And this went on for month after month after month. And then November of 01, I was in my dorm on a Wednesday night. I just got home from church. My roommate Kevin was not back from church yet and I was alone. And I was sitting on the edge of my dorm bed when the Spirit of God spoke to my heart as clear as I'm speaking to you. And he said, Gabriel, it's time for you to go home. And I said, Lord, you don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> the next day I called my dad. We were in a, I believe a radiothon at that time. I called my dad and I said, Dad, the Lord spoke to my heart last night and told me to come home. I'll never forget what he said. He said, how are your grades? I said, not too good. <laughs> he said, just finish the semester. How much long do you have? I said, about two weeks. Finish the semester and come home. I told him, and I said, in that conversation, I said, Dad, I feel like I'm wasting your money. But God has told me to come home. And it really wasn't a question of saying, I think you need to stay. He said, if that's what you feel, that's what you've got to do. I called my mom, and it's the same thing. I called my grandmother. My grandmother was a little bit more, I think you probably, I think you need to stay. But I said, Mimi, I don't feel like I, feel like I need to come home. And. The last one I called was Papa, and he was on the air, and I think I had to wait about 20 minutes. <laughs> and I said the same thing, Papa, I'm coming home. He said, good. I'm glad you are. Now, you got to understand, I didn't have a plan. I didn't come here expecting to be put in some type of a position. All I knew was God said, go home and get involved in the ministry. And I remember there were times where not really knowing what I was doing, that still, that longing of trying to figure out how to live for God was on my mind. And then it happened. One Sunday morning, I was sitting where Dr. Dupree is sitting. And on that Sunday morning, during that time frame, it was, the year was 2002, back when we had the red carpet and the octagon. Papa would minister just about every Sunday morning. And you have to know, most of you may not remember, but some of you do, that during that time frame when he would minister, he would never stay on the platform. He would start on the platform, and then by the time he ended, he or ended his text or prayer or his introduction, he was on the floor walking up and down the aisles, walking around the front. I mean, I remember one time he walked literally way back to the back and came walking back down again. But that Sunday morning, I do not remember what he was preaching on. I don't remember the text. I don't remember the title. I don't remember anything during, before, or after. I just remember one moment, which was a, it was a pivotal moment in my life. He was standing right here in, this, in that spot. He was talking to this side of the congregation when he stopped and did his classic Jimmy Swaggart finger point right in that camera, and he, all he said was these words, everything that you will ever be in need of has been paid for by Jesus Christ through what he did at Calvary. Everything that you will ever be in need of 
was paid for by Jesus Christ through what he did at Calvary's cross 2,000 years ago. And when he said it, the light bulb turned on. I was sitting over there, and all of a sudden, you remember, you remember that feeling when that message came to you. And we all see it, and we all have different experiences, but most of us say the same thing. It was like we were born again all over again. I'm telling you, it hit me like lightning. When he said that, I'm like, that's it. That's what I've been missing. I've been trying to do this on my own. I've been trying to do this and force this through my own works. But he's telling me right now, it's not in what you do. It's in what Jesus Christ has already done for you. It's in what Jesus Christ has already accomplished. And then I made a mistake, like so many of us. And I thought to myself, well, now that I got this, smooth sailing from here. <laughs> got it all, man. But you know what I'm talking about. I didn't realize that's when the struggle really began. So many people ask us, why is there a greater struggle since I've started to understand the message of the cross than before? And the answer is very simple. Satan knows that you have found the answer. And Satan will stop at nothing to try to pull you away from the finished work of Christ. He will stop at nothing to try to weaken your faith or even destroy your faith. Months went by, and it felt like all hell, and excuse the terminology, all hell was breaking loose. I wasn't married yet. I wasn't involved in ministry yet. But I came to a breaking point it was one Wednesday evening at 5 p.m. How do you know it was that time frame? Well, back in that time, I was a huge Sports Center fanatic. I watched Sports Center every day at 5 p.m., their flagship show. I don't watch it much anymore because it's too woke. But during that time frame, it was, I watched it every day. And I was sitting on the edge of my bed, and to be honest, I didn't really want to, I didn't want to hear Dan Patrick talking, so I muted him. And I'm sitting on the edge of my bed, and I just begin to weep. And I just said, Lord, I don't understand it. You said that everything that I will ever be in need of was paid for by Christ through what he did at Calvary. And I've been looking to you and doing my best to look to the cross for everything that I'll never need. And yet I'm still struggling and I feel like I'm struggling more now than I was before. And then I said these words and I asked, it was a question, kind of rhetorical, but I said, Lord, I thought the cross was supposed to work. How many of you asked that? Be real. Let's be honest. I got up. I was about to start getting ready for midweek Bible study. And I had a nightstand next to my bed. And as I turned to the right and I went over to that nightstand, I stopped. And the Lord spoke to me. He spoke to my heart and he asked me a question. Do you want to be made free? And I sat there for a second and I'm like, absolutely. Yes, I want to be made free. 
and he spoke one word. One word. It wasn't forceful. It wasn't like a shaking of the heavens. It was that still, small voice that said this one word, believe. It didn't make sense at first. But over the years, I've come to realize what he was saying is this. Yeah, the cross is always going to work. Here's the part that you play. Regardless of what the devil tries to do, believe. No matter what the devil tries to do to sway you, keep your faith anchored in Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary. Don't move to the right. Don't move to the left. Don't back up and don't do anything else, but you go forward in your faith and no matter what happens, believe. Don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. Don't quit believing. Even when it gets tough, don't quit believing. But continue to place your faith each and every single day in Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary. For when you do, you've got the help of the Holy Spirit working inside of you each and every single day of your life to bring about victory that you need in your life. So whatever you do, church, whenever you leave here and the devil starts hitting you, you look at the devil and say, devil, I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. I'm not, even if you fail, the moment you leave church, you get yourself back up and say, devil, I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. I'm still believing. My faith is still anchored in what Jesus Christ has done for me. Are you saying, Gabe, whenever I fail? Yeah, when you fail, when you make a fool of yourself, when you mess up, when you get knocked down, when you get knocked down and the devil is looking at you and saying, I've got you now, you just get yourself right back up, dust yourself off, and say, devil, I'm still believing. I'm still believing. I'm still believing. I'm still believing that Jesus Christ is enough for my victory. Jesus is enough. And the cross still works. The reason why I brought up that story because I've got some parallels to our story and our text today. The book of Joshua is an interesting book. If you've read the book of Joshua, you'll know it. It's an exciting book. It's a book of war. It's a book of possession, where the children of God possess the land of promise. But as we begin, the story of Joshua, I have to begin in chapter one. There was a pivotal moment in the life of Joshua that I just want to touch on that leads us to this chapter. The scripture says that Moses was dead, the great lawgiver the one whom God had chose to lead the people out of Egyptian slavery. Joshua was chosen by God to be his successor. You've got to imagine the weight and the pressure that was on Joshua during that time. Knowing that he was now responsible for nearly two and a half to three million people. 
Let me tell you something. There are a lot of us that want to be leaders, but when it comes down to crunch time, how would you like to, be de- to have two and a half to three million people dependent on you? Some of us can't even, we can't even handle three. The weight, the pressure. And God speaks to him and says, Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. (laughs) But you need to get up. You and all these people, get up, cross over Jordan, and every place, I said every place, every place that the sole of your foot shall touch, oh my Lord, every place that the sole of your foot shall touch, I have given it unto you. I've got news for you. That same word that was spoken to Joshua is spoken right now. And he's saying, SBN, every place that the sole of your foot shall touch, I have given it unto you. Woo! I have given it unto you. And then he said this. Joshua, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you may go. Be strong, be strong, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord your God shall be with you wherever you may go. Glory to God. Somebody ought to shout in this place. God is with you. I said God is with you. God is with you. I said God is with you. There may be some of you that God has spoken to and has told you to launch out. Step out in faith. I've called you for something. And yet you're saying, I don't understand it, God. There's no way. You need to take this word as a promise. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you may go. My Lord, are you getting this 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 morning? My, he's telling us right now, regardless of what it looks like, step out in faith, step out in faith, step out in faith, walk out into the deep, and I promise I'll never let you go. Be strong. Be strong and of good courage. That was a pivotal moment. My Lord, I feel that. Be strong. Be strong. Let me just stop here for a moment. I just need to tell y'all something. Some of you, you came into this camp meeting beaten down. You came to this camp meeting with the weight of the world on your shoulders, and you don't know where to go. You don't know where to turn. You don't know what to do. But the Holy Spirit is telling you right now, have I not commanded you? Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Get yourself back up, and I'll be with you wherever you may go. Get this in your spirit. God is with me. 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 me. Devil, you can huff, you can puff, you can blow, you can talk, but my Jesus is with me. My Jesus is still with me. My Jesus is with me. Be strong, church. Be strong, church. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Be Be of good courage. This is your pivotal moment. 
I said, this is your pivotal moment. Just as it was Joshua's, this is your pivotal moment. He's telling you, get up, get up. Every place that the sole of your feet shall touch, I have given it unto you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may have walked away from God for a minute, but God's dealing with you right now, and he's telling you, just come on back. Just turn around. Come on back. And he's telling you, be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Get up and be strong. For God is with you wherever you may go. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be strong and of good courage. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you may go. When you wake up in the morning, God is with me. When you go to work, God is with me. Whenever you go to sleep at night, God is with me. Come on, just slip up your hands right now and just worship him for a moment. My God is with me. He's with me wherever I may go. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Be strong and of good courage. Forgive me, church. I can't leave that right now. I can't leave that right now. <laughs> He's telling you, be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, just speak your praises to him, church. Just speak your praises to him this morning. My God is with us. My God is with us. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
I'm not going to try to finish this message because I believe God is speaking. He's dealing with you right now. He's telling you, be strong. He's telling you to be strong. If you could just stand right now all across this auditorium. I want our singers and musicians to come back today. And I want us just, if you can, just for a moment, I want you to come down to this front. And I want you just to stretch, just stretch forth your hands and let's just have a moment of worship and praise. I think God is strengthening some of you right now. He's strengthening many of you right now and he's dealing with you. Whatever they feel led to sing right now, just go ahead and just worship him. Just go ahead and praise him right now. Just go ahead and enter it. That's it, he's able. He's able. I know that he's able. Oh, yes. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. That's it right there. I know my Lord is able. My Lord is able. He's able. I know.
claiming your city. Start claiming your church. The Lord has called you. He has raised you up. He has anointed you for a time such as this. Don't let the devil steal your victory. Every place the sole of your foot shall trod. I have given it unto you. No weapon formed against you can prosper. Come on, praise him. church whatever burden you carry with you to this camp meeting you need to shake it off right now you need to shake it off right now every problem every lie the enemy has been telling you you need to shake it off right now he has made us the head and not the tail we are victorious this morning Start claiming your city, claim your home, claim your children, your, claim your family right now.
to do something this morning. I just feel impressed in my spirit. Praise God. Praise God. You come from across this United States, north, south, east, west. Our nation is under attack. The devil is trying to destroy this nation. 
because this is the nation that the light has been given to spread across to the world. And as gay priests, the Lord began to move every place the sole of your feet shall try. When you go back home to those individual states, you can't walk, of course, in the physical, the length and breadth, but spiritually, we can claim our state and our nation, that this nation will not be destroyed. The work of God will go forward. It will go forth from these shores to the nations of the world. And those of you that are joining us from countries outside of the United States, Europe is basically gone. It's secular. But there's still a remnant. There's still a remnant. I want you to lift your hands this morning. And as the word came forth, every place, the sole of your feet shall trod. I have given. Let's claim this nation once again for the Lord. Come on, lift those hands right now. Every Father, in the name of Jesus, where you are able, we have come before you as your people this morning. And Lord, we're claiming our nation. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise.
We hope you enjoyed this camp meeting service from the Sun Life Broadcasting Network.